Hello, my fellow randoms. I come here today with a question. Have you ever wanted to be a spy at a high-class party, doing spy things in this party? Well, the answer to any of these questions was yes. I have the game for you. This is Spy Party, a game where you do spy things at a party. The only twist be that there is a sniper waiting outside, looking at the party, trying to find you. Just dance at you from the crowd and put a bullet into your high class head. My name is Averyman117, also known as Simon, and welcome to a random show off of Spy Party. As I just mentioned in my fancy high class voice, this is a game about being a spy at a party and trying to blend in with the crowd and not get shot. Now, this is actually a really, really fun game, and you can spend hours, assuming you get a good player to play it with, and you can just spend hours playing this game over and over, seeing if you can, you know, if you can do better each round, if you can actually survive the round. I mean, oh my goodness, this it, this game can get really intense when you're the spy, especially when you're just walking around thinking you've been incredibly obvious when you've done something, and the laser of the sniper, which you can actually see if you're the spy, is hovering over your head. You start panicking IRL, and your heart just stops. Right, so... As much as I'd love to show off the multiplayer of this game, which I'm sure many of you would like to see, unfortunately, the multiplayer on any on this particular game is not a guarantee. I cannot guarantee that I will a, find someone who is of a similar level to me, and b that I will be able to actually, you know, get someone at all. So I'm just going to show you guys the offline practice mode, which bit of a disclaimer here uh, does not actually have AI for the other player, so you are kind of just versing a nothing. So in reality, you can't lose. Uh, now, the thing you need to know about this game before I get into it is it is an early access beta, similar to the previous video I've done, which is in Stellar Marines, and you'll probably ask you, why are you doing a video on an early access beta? Well, uh, the reason I did a video on in Stellar Marines is because it showed up on Steam, and it may or may not have been finished to some people, so you need to get some information on whether or not you should pay for it if you actually want to. Uh, Spy Party, however, is a beta, and therefore kind of counts as a demo, and, you know, beta is beta, and you will actually, you know, it will get better. So, beta is a little bit easier to do because it's more finished and it actually has a lot of its features in. It's just a matter of bug fixing and making sure it's ready. So, this is kind of like the, we're releasing this to the public, and, uh, of course, you know, you guys can test it. If you want to get this game, it is $15. It will set you back $15 for an early access beta, but the link will be in the description. You guys can feel free to check it out. So... Let's uh, do practice mode, and let's show you guys the mechanics of the game. Now, I am playing with an Xbox 360 controller. The game recommends that you play with an Xbox 360 controller. I believe it does, actually. Uh, and basically, this makes it a lot easier to do things, because <coughs> it kind of plays a bit like Gears of War in some areas, and the you'll see what I mean. And it just makes it smoother to actually walk around as if you're part of the guest. So, I'm going to practice Spy. Pretty much the second I hit practice Spy, it'll go straight into it. So, let's do this, shall we? Actually, no, I have to pick a level first, right? So there are a number of levels available to this game. Uh, there is a beginner versus beginner ballroom, ballroom, balcony, veranda, courtyard, and courtyard too. Now, all these levels have different missions available to them, but, you know, they have different levels of difficulty based on those missions. So if that doesn't make sense to you, I'll explain it when I'm in the game. So here I am in uh, beginner versus beginner ballroom. As you can see in the top left mode, I have practice spy mode, complete four no missions. I have to bug the ambassador, contact a double agent, transfer a microfilm, and swap a statue. Now, there is documentation telling you how to do all these missions, so you don't have to uh, try and figure it out. So you can actually look at it. But let me let me give you an example of what I'm doing. So, I am going to A to control the spy, and I'm going to start by transferring the microfilm. So, the microfilm is located in these bookshelves. I have to just first of all take the last of my drinks. I can't do anything while the drink's my hand, that, you know, requires my left hand. Let's get a book. So, there are two ways I can do this objective. First of all is I can extract the microfilm from the book. As you can see at the bottom, it says get microfilm from book with B, or I can walk the book to another shelf. Now, the problem with this is if I get the microfilm from the book as shown, I will actually do a very suspicious movement, and anyone who is actually looking for it will be able to see that, notice I'm a spy, and shoot me. Now, the idea of this game is to be subtle. Another thing is... I can actually walk this book to another uh, bookshelf, but of course, the NPCs will never do that. So if the sniper sees me do that, I have been boned. So I'm going to put this microfilm back in this book, just for the sake of this. But if I were to, for example, just walk it straight over, I wouldn't have to do that. But of course, it would be very obvious if the sniper was paying attention. 
but also I could take a book from the green bookshelf, put the microfilm in it, and then put that book back. So that's one objective completed. So now I have to move on to another objective. Let's go over to the double agent here and contact him. Now, the tell for the double agent is banana bread. So if I were to signal double agent, I would say banana, banana bread. bread. Now, the thing about the sniper is he can look at people who he suspects are the double agents who will be marked on his screen. He can see who's in conversation with them and who is, you know, currently uh, talking to them. And if there's only one double agent in conversation, someone's talking, he can have a very good indication of who may be the spy, although it's probably not enough evidence to shoot because the spy can actually use, uh, if he does it correctly, he can actually do the whole thing without the playing the talking animation at all. If he does it badly, he'll cough when he does it, which is a dead giveaway of who's the spy, if that makes sense. So, two objectives done. Now I have to go and bug the ambassador. Now, as you'll see here, when I bug the ambassador, it kind of looks like I'm giving her a clap on the ass. Well, if it, it would if I was actually next to her. So, generally it makes it a little obvious that you're bugging the ambassador. So, you know, it's a little bit uh, obvious, so you have to do it in either crowds, or you have to do it when walking. It's You have to try and be subtle about it, otherwise you're going to get yourself shot. Of course, this all depends on whether or not the sniper is paying attention. The final mission for this particular map is to swap a statue. Now, as you can see here, there are three types of statues. There is a little head uh, eagle man, and there is a little tall short man. But of course, the short man isn't shown on this map for whatever reason. Statues are random every time, so whatever. So if you're the sniper and you uh, memorize all the statues, and then you see that once someone's uh, gone and picked up the statue, that it has changed, then you can know who the spy is and shoot them. Of course, you, you can just, you know, pay attention to them actually changing the statue, but, you know, it depends. There's more to it than that, but, yeah, I'll, I'll let me explain it to you now, because, of course, it's quiet and I can think. Every time a spy accomplishes an objective, they generally have a Gears of War-esque reload system style of doing it. So, for example, when transferring the microfilm, you have a bar which has red, white, and green parts on it. You choose to stop the little slider on the bar, of course, it only goes through once, and if you stop it in a white area, it will be a sort of neutral, generic sort of suspicious but sort of not uh, way of doing it. If you stop it on green, it'll be extremely smooth and it won't easily be detected. For example, when you're doing the uh, signaling double agent, you won't play the talking animation at all, which means no one will notif notice you. And if you hit the red part of the bar, you will do an extremely obvious bit. For example, if you, like I said with the double agent, you will cough and then someone can just, they will actually hear the cough and then they have to look around for someone who's coughing, see them, shoot them. Simple as that. Uh, also, if you do it with the book, you will take a lot time, a lot of time to do it. You'll fumble with it, and it'll be extremely obvious that you're doing it. Of course, this all depends on the sniper actually seeing it, and I will actually talk about that now. So, let me just pick this again. As the sniper, you are able to move around as a disembodied laser, essentially, uh, and you have to look for people in this uh, ballroom who are acting suspicious. Now, since there's no AI spy, what happens is the spy is going to be controlled by the generic guest AI, and therefore they will not be able to be seen. But I will demonstrate the mechanics. Let's just say, oh, this guy over here looks suspicious. I'm going to hit right trigger to highlight him. So he is now a person of interest to me. This person over here, he's a suspected double agent. He can't be the spy, so I'm going to low light him. And this chick here, she has boobs, so I'm not going to uh, highlight her. She can't possibly be the spy, so she's going to be completely, uh, you know, innocent to me. Of course, that's just me being an idiot there, but of course, you know, generally, whatever. So basically, it's a matter of looking out for people and uh, trying to figure out who is the spy and then shooting them. You know, this takes a bit of practice, and there is a bit that lets you... Uh, <coughs> sorry, there is a menu option, that I completely forget where it is, that allows you to see what the tells are for different missions. I'll actually show you this in a second. But once you figure out who you think is the spy, you right click the right thumbstick. Of course, I'm talking about... Uh, what do you call it? Uh, Xbox 360 controls here. You can actually enter scope mode, and once you see who you think it is, pull the trigger, Shoot. I... I got the spy. I actually got the person who was the spy when the spy was doing nothing. That is a one in a million shot. But actually it happened to me that someone that I've done completely nothing at all, they've shot me because they thought I was suspicious when I've done nothing, and I've actually died because obviously I was shot. So that's actually an interesting case. I shot the spy. So anyway... That's basically what Sniper is. Sniper is a really fun thing to do, and once you get good at it, you notice subtle things. But really good spies who have had many spy wins can actually be extremely subtle about it. And even though I've paid a lot of attention and I'm a pretty decent sniper, 
I have had trouble locating some extremely good players, and there are some people who have played this game a lot. I'm talking thousands of spy wins, thousands of sniper wins, and they're very good at what they do. So let's show preview spy missions. So these are the different tells for the different missions. You'll be able to see what they do. So let me give you an example. Planting the bug while, the, uh, while you're uh, talking to the ambassador in uh, conversation. Uh, this is on the left side. You'll see that he reaches out and he sort of gives them a ass tap, essentially. And we've made some jokes about this with some random person I met, where I saw them tap the ambassador's ass and I shot them and I'm like, you shall not ass tap while I'm around. So basically, if you can look for that, you can, uh, you know, you can see them and you can get them. Now, it is possible to get away with this if you actually have a bunch of crowds and the area where you're ass tapping them is blocked by the ambassador themselves, i.e. the ambassador is between your hand and the sniper's eye, so the sniper can't see it. it it's possible to get away with it. Uh, if I hit A again, you'll see what it looks like when they bug them on the right side. Anytime now. Yep. You can uh, do it while you're walking, which is very subtle and very difficult to detect. And of course, there's walking on the right heart side. So we have here, Banana contact red. the double agent. As you'll see, if you hit the white action test, as it's called, you will play the talking animation and say banana bread. If you get the red action test, you'll say banana bread. And, and you'll cough. <laughs> Anyone can see that, shoot you. If you hit the green act action test, you'll say banana bread without even playing the talking animation, which kind of eliminates you from all suspicion. Unless someone has already seen you be suspicious, then you're in a uh, conversation with someone who is a suspected double agent, and they say, oh, like I did, if that person, if banana bread is said, that person's going to die because I know that's spy. So you can see, getting hiding the microfilm, white action test, Basically, you do the suspicious animation of you take it from your pocket and you put it in there. Of course, unless, of course, you're taking it out, in which case you still take it from your pocket, strangely enough. Red action test, you'll see, is a lot more extreme. You fumble a little bit once we get there. See, you fumble. And the head motion is way more extreme. So, generally, it's a lot easier to see that way. Also, if you have used the green action test, you pretty much just take it. The hand motion is a lot smoother. And no one sees your head motion, so it's a lot you know, easier to get away with it. And of course, this is the one when there's no hard tell, which is where you take the bookshelf from one to another. Which, if the sniper is paying attention, they can highlight the book, see which bookshelf it came from, and see that you are taking it to another bookshelf and, you know, kill you for it. So let's go on to another one. I'm not going to show you all of them, but you get you get the idea here. You know, you guys can check a lot of these out yourself. You can see out, you know, what different missions there are. And, uh, well, that's pretty much all of them, actually. I've just cycled through pretty much all of them. So, you know, you guys can check it out for yourself and see what you like. But uh, I'm, I'm afraid, I'm sorry that uh, I can't show you more of this game and I can't show you some actual gameplay. But like I said, the multiplayer community, I can't guarantee I'll find a match. Find a match. So, if you want to get my opinion on this game, it is extremely fun. It's kind of unpolished, needs better graphics, a lot of people say. But a couple of uh, bits of polish here and there would help it. But apart from that, the game is actually really well done. It's 100% playable in its current state. You know, you can find the spy, you can elude the sniper. It's 100% playable, and it's just, it's a great, fun game. If you're looking for an espionage-based game, which is based more on behavior rather than people's actions, like Trouble in Terrorist Town is in Gary's Mod, then Spy Party is a really good game, and you guys should check it out. It is only $15, which is actually the same price as Interstellar Marines, interestingly enough. So... If you like uh, those two games and you want to pick between one, I would recommend Spy Party because it's more finished. So that's all I have for today. If you guys enjoyed this video, thank you for watching it. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to be notified when I release new videos. I release them all the time. If you want to help out my channel, please feel free to share this video. Unless, of course, you know you want to share this because you want someone to know what the game is. Uh, you know, whatever. And uh, I guess I'll see you guys later. And until then, I will see you later. I've said it twice, but I'm just going to go now because it's very awkward. See you guys. Bye.